Hello, this is Ira. So today we're gonna go over uh, the thermodynamics section for the GIFIs. We're gonna start with section uh, 183.001 units and properties. Units and properties, like as all the sections on GIFIs, they are divided in knowledges. So this section, it has two knowledges, but in each knowledge, I was able to capture like different like topics. So here are the topics that we will cover. So for this knowledge one, we'll have conversion for pressure units. For knowledge K103, we're gonna have uh, storage water tanks with uh, differential pressure level detectors. We're gonna have also a closed water storage tank, manometers, and open water storage tank with differential pressure level indicator. So that's basically what we're gonna have on this one. So going very quickly, so for the conversion of uh, pressure units, we're gonna have, the only thing that we need to know basically on this one is that zero PSIA is equal to 15 PSIA. For instance, if we wanna convert from, if we are giving a, uh, as an example. Let's say that we are giving five inches mercury vacuum. So I have my five inches mercury vacuum. If I wanna convert two inches of mercury absolute, I'm gonna use this room so that will be 25 inches of mercury absolute, right? So 25 plus five is uh, 30. So I use the, the ruler, that's how I call it. And once I convert it to 25 inches of mercury absolute, if I convert from vacuum to absolute, I just divide absolute by two and that will give me 12.5. PSIA, which is this formula right here, which is the same. So that's basically all I need to know. Those all the problems for the chief is in the section. We are giving more information, but I think that's all we need. So now, something important. I think this one, it's kind of like important because it's a little bit more complex than just unit conversion. This one, we really need to analyze it a little bit more. So this one, this one we're gonna have uh, different types of storage tanks on GFs, like on different parts. But one thing to consider, it's uh, that we're gonna have, for instance, uh, two major types of water tanks, open vessels and closed vessels. And in this case, specifically, we're gonna take a look at closed vessels. So the major difference between the open and closed vessel level measurement is the fact that we need to consider the pressure in the vapor above the liquid. This part right here, because that's exerting a force on the surface of this liquid. So we need to consider that. And also we can compensate for the vapor pressure by connecting a low pressure side of the differential pressure transmitter. So we're gonna have these transmitters here. We're gonna have the low pressure side, and we're gonna have the high pressure side, and we will we will determine like, which one is which in a moment. But usually what's gonna happen is that the reference leg is also gonna, is usually going to be the low pressure side. As we can see, low pressure, low pressure, low pressure. This case, in the technical number one, we'll take a look why we have the high pressure level detector on the reference side. So we're gonna have a reference leg. So this is what we call the reference leg. The reference legs are here. Now, we can have either a wet or a dry leg. So the reference leg, as I say, it can be dry or it can be filled with liquid. And if the reference leg is dry, it's commonly referred as to the dry leg. And if it's filled with whatever liquid, it's commonly referred as a wet leg. 
And there are many reasons for a wet leg, such as avoiding the an error mis measurement caused by the vapor condensate in the reference leg. But uh, let's take a look at an example of a wet leg system. So we have this wet leg system. This is closed wet. Okay, so we're going to have detector one. We're going to start with this detector, detector one. So for detector one, so this detector is going to contain a uh, condensable fluid, such as steam on top. So it's going to contain that. And in applications with condensable fluids, uh, condensation is greatly increased in the reference leg. So in this case, the reference leg, we can see is right here, it's gonna be higher than this part, right? Than the tank, usually, because we need to have a differential pressure. So the liquid in the reference leg applies a hydrostatic head to the high pressure side of the transmitter. And the value of this level is gonna be constant if the Reference leg is maintained full, so let's say that we keep this one at the same level as the reference leg, it's gonna be constant, right? It's gonna be zero. Differential pressure is gonna be zero. So the field reference leg applies this hydrostatic pressure to the high pressure side of the transmitter, which is equal to the maximum level to be measured. So the differential pressure transmitter is exposed to equal pressure on the high side and low pressure sides when the liquid level is at maximum. So that's what I'm talking about. Like when the liquid level is at maximum, that's where the differential pressure is zero. And as the level of the tank goes down, so the level of the tank goes down, we're gonna have is that the pressure applied to the low pressure side goes down also. And the differential pressure is gonna increase. So as a result, the differential pressure and the transmitter output are inversely proportional to the tank level. And we'll take a look at that, uh, what we mean by that. So for now, detector differential pressure on detector number one. We have a reference leg that we call closed wet. And that the formula for differential pressure is always going to be the same. Differential pressure is going to be equal to pressure high minus pressure low. And that's our formula. But let's evaluate each problem individually. So for the pressure high or the high side, since we determine that the high side is going to be here because the reference leg is higher. So our high is going to be the reference leg. Right, we're gonna have a reference leg, but we also have some gas in here. So we're gonna have the pressure of the gas and the pressure of the reference in the pressure high side of the formula. Now, what is the pressure low? The pressure low is gonna be on this side. So that's gonna be all of this, which is the pressure of the water and the pressure of the gas. So we have pressure of the water and pressure of the gas. So now, we eliminate and we are left with the pressure of the reference leg minus the pressure of the water. So this is what it's affecting this detector. So for detector number two, the high pressure connector, in this case is gonna be connected to the water tank and the low pressure is gonna be connected directly to uh, atmosphere. In this case, we have a reference leg that is gonna be open dry. And this one is simple, right? Like it's connected to atmosphere. Obviously this one is gonna be way high, way lower than this side of the detector because we have this hydrostatic head here. So now differential pressure detector number two, reference leg is open dry. Formula, differential pressure is equal to pressure high minus, minus pressure low. Okay, but what's pressure high specifically? Pressure high is gonna be the pressure of the water and the pressure of the gas combined. That's my pressure high, and my pressure low is gonna be the pressure of the atmosphere. So in this case, this is what we are gonna end up having. Now, we're gonna have here detector number three. 
So for detector number three, in this detector, the low pressure of the side is on the atmosphere side because the tank is at overpressure. So this tank is at overpressure. So the reference leg is what we call open width. Okay, so this one is open width. Again, or differential pressure formula, pressure high minus pressure low. And let's analyze what's on the high side of the formula. So on the high side, we're going to have the reference. I'm sorry, the low pressure here. Okay, so on the high pressure side, we're going to have the water correction. So this is the high side first. On the high pressure side, we're going to have the pressure of the water and the pressure of the gas, right? So because we are at overpressure, we have the pressure of the water and the pressure of the gas. And on the low side, we're going to have the reference. And we're also going to have atmosphere, right? And actually, this is all that is affecting this differential pressure level detector in here. So now for the next one, for the differential pressure detector number four, so the high pressure connector is... Uh, it's going to be connected to the tank and the low side is going to be connected to a reference leg to this reference leg and this reference leg is pressurized by gas or vapor pressure but not liquid is permitted to remain in the reference leg so the reference leg must be maintained dry so that there is no liquid head pressure on the low side of the transmitter as we can see in here and the high pressure of the side is exposed to the hydrostatic head of the liquid plus the gas and vapor or vapor pressure exerted on the surface of the liquid. So in a dry leg system, such as this one, the vapor pressure is applied to the high pressure and the low pressure sides of the differential pressure transmitter, as we can see here, right? It's applied to both sides. So the same pressure applied on each side basically cancels each other out Therefore, the output of the differential pressure transmitter is going to be directly proportional to the hydrostatic head pressure, uh, that is, the level in the tank. And let's take a look at the formula and confirm that information. So for the detector number four, we're going to have differential pressure, which is equal to pressure high and pressure low. On the high side of the detector, we're going to have water and gas, both pressure of water and gas. Yeah, that's correct. And on the low side of the detector, we're going to have the pressure of the gas only. So evaluating the formula, we end up just having the pressure of the water, which is going to be your, what we call our hydrostatic head pressure or just the tank water level affecting detector number four. So there's going to be uh, one problem where they talk about a diaphragm. And I just want to go very quickly on that, uh, kind of like what, what, what does that mean? So a diaphragm is uh, something that separates the air and the water. It's kind of like a vinyl or a rubber type of material. So let's say that we have a diaphragm here. And this diaphragm, which is made out of rubber or something, is separating the gas from the water, right? So it's doing that. And, well, what happens, uh, one of the questions is, like, what happens if the diaphragm ruptures, right? What are we going to do? What's happening with our system if this diaphragm ruptures? It's rupturing from here. So if we say that the tank experienced this rupture, we mean that the differential pressure of the gas in the tank is going to go to zero and it's basically like having an empty tank so our differential pressure is going to go to zero if we have if we have a ruptured diaphragm in here and i think that's basically all we need to know for that problem i think it's just only going to be just one problem okay so now let's go to the next one. The next one is a closed water storage tank. And this one is just one problem. And for this problem, uh, they're only asking something very simple. They're just asking if 
which which part is sensing the low pressure of the tank. It's not giving us any picture. It's not giving us anything else. It's just asking us, like, they give us information. And they only tell us that we have this closed water storage tank, which is, has, like, nitrogen. Where's the low pressure side, right? And just remember, if you have a system like this with a gas, you're going to end up having the low pressure side of the of the tank on, a, on the dry reference leg. So just make sure you remember that, which is going to be this space, the gas space at the top of the tank. That's all we need to know from that one. Then the next one is the manometer. So the manometer is a also another device that measures pressure. So this device is measuring the pressure here. So, and it's basically like an, a U-shape kind of tube filled with some liquid. And in this case, I think the liquid is going to be water uh, or what we use in EFIS. And in this picture here, in this picture, we will have this manometer connected to an air field tube. So there's air coming through here, right? And the question that it will be asked is to determine, we need to determine the direction of the airflow. For instance, here I can easily know the direction because Air flows from high pressure to low pressure. Here it tells me point A and B are equal, so these points are equal. But then I also have this Z, this height. When I have this height here, so that this is static column of water here, this is going to be my low pressure side so that means the air is coming from left to right as we can see air is coming up through here is pushing this down it has more pressure coming from here and then it goes down that way so it's not gonna be as much pressure coming here so all the pressure is gonna make this push up on this column so that's basically how we know the direction. And we can determine like the other one, we know that we have air. So the air is gonna be moving from right to left. Remember, this is my low side. So that means that my high, my high pressure is two. In this one, my high pressure is P1. And they can ask us the opposite. I mean, I don't think they will, but which one is the low pressure side, right? We can also determine that since we already determined the high side. We can also determine the low side of the detector as well. And I think, okay, I think that's almost it for GFIS then for this section, but there's also one more section and it talks about open water storage tank with a differential pressure level indicator and in this one i think you can um, you have a, only one problem showing only one um uh, it only shows one one picture and i think everything else doesn't have any picture and we will go over those so this one the only thing that we need to do, because the question is going to either ask us the water level in feet or the differential pressure sensed by the detector in PSIE. The only thing that I really memorize, because you can have Renoli's equation, which is given on the equation sheet. I don't need that. The only thing that I need to remember for this type of problem is that 2.3 feet is equal, it's equal to 1 PSIE, right? And this is the conversion factor that I use, and that's only the only thing that I use for this and I can remember that easily it's already ingrained in my brain and I will suggest you to you know have it ingrained in your brain too now we will go over the problem section part you know uh, okay now for the problem part of the GP so we can find these problems on a 
on the website for the NRC. So we can just type on Google NRC generic fundamentals and it will take us to a page where we can find that information. Okay, so now see uh, the things that I told you that we need to remember. Things that we really need to remember. We need to remember that 0 PSIA is equal to 15 PS. IA, I'm sorry, PSIG. 0 PSIG is equal to 15 PSIA, so that's one of the things that I remember already. Uh, my rule from 0 to 30 for inches of mercury vacuum, 2 inches of mercury absolute. Okay, I remember that. Another thing that I need to remember is my conversion factor 2.3 feet over PSI A or PSI. That's another thing that I remember. So okay, now let's let's work on this. Okay, I have an atmospheric pressure of 15 PSI A and I need to convert it to PSI G. Well I know the answer because I know that this is part of my of the stuff that I remember from the formula, so I know that the answer is going to be delta in this one. Okay, now for the next question. I don't know if I'm going to use this, but let's bring it in. Now it's asking me to convert 20 inches of mercury vacuum, and I need to convert them to PSIA, okay? So I'm going to use my rule, so I'm going to have 27 inches of mercury vacuum, basically I'm here, so the rest is going to be 3 inches of mercury absolute, but I need to convert to PSIA, so what do I do? So I just divide it over 2, and that gives me 1.5. PSIA, okay? So now let's take a look. Uh, let me see if there's something different here. Maybe this one, okay. So this one is only to convert from 900 PSIG to PSIA. So I have zero PSIG equal to 15 PSIA. So if I want to convert PSIG to PSIA, I just add 15, so it's going to be 915 PSIA, and that's the answer. Okay, so now this one is another interesting one. So this one, I need to convert each one. So this one is telling me to convert to from 5 PSIA to 20 PSIG. Okay, so 0 PSIG equal to 15 PSIA. Okay, that's something that I need to have handy. So that means the 20 PSIG is going to be 35 PSIA. This one is going to be 25 PSIA because I need to convert each one of them. This one is going to be 20 inches of mercury absolute, which in turn, if I, I need to divide it by 2 to convert it to PSIA, right? So it's going to give me 10 PSIA. So now this one is 20 inches of mercury vacuum. That means it is 10 inches mercury absolute. That means that that's my 5 PSIA. So that's going to be my answer, delta. See, so I need to do each one of them just to be sure that, you know, I'm trying to answer this correctly. So now, this is another one that we will have to basically do the same. And what I do is I try to convert everything into PSIA. It's more easy for me. So the first one is going to be 8. PSIA, 20 inches absolute. So this one I only divided by 2. So that is giving me 10 PSIA. And then I have this one, 2 PSIG plus 15. 
it's gonna be 17 PSA. So this one is telling me to arrange the, from the lowest pressure to the highest pressure. And I think this is low to high. So this one here, it's A then 17. So that's a no, it's not arranged like that. This one is gonna be 10 and then 10 to eight. So that's not a range. Then in 17, so that's also not a range. So my only answer here is gonna be alpha. But I need to do each one of them. I know that I'm going a little fast, but I mean, that's the idea. So now I think uh, that's kind of kind of like all the examples that we have that are important. Just another reminder on, on the rule, so 0, 30. So I know that I have 16 inches of mercury vacuum. So that's going to be 16. And to get the absolute, I get 14 inches of mercury absolute. 14, 16, 30. Correct answer. And I hope this rule ruler makes more sense because we are giving so much information and they uh, when they explain it to us they, they made like a rule like that and they put PSIA, PSIA, Macium, Absolute and to me that was really confusing and I think we can just make things simpler. So now I think this is a tank that I was talking about. The closed uh, water tank, one of the tanks that I was Talking about the one that mentions the has the has the nitrogen or a gas in it, just a gas. Okay, so this one it says this problem is P five seven three. We have a closed water tank that is pressurized with nitrogen. A differential pressure detector is used to measure the tank water level. This is just blah blah blah. Okay. So to achieve the most accurate water level measurement, the low pressure side of the detector should be sensed which one of the following. So we already talked about that. So we have a tank that has like a hydrogen in it. We're gonna make the assumption. We have gas, we have water. So this is what we have gonna make the assumption that is a high pressure and this is a low pressure side in this case. So where is the low pressure side in this case? So the low pressure side is here. And the answer that we have of the options is uh, to achieve the most accurate water level measurement, the low pressure side of the detector should sense which one of the following. A pressure at the middle line of the tank, well, no, that doesn't make sense. The pressure of the atmosphere surrounding the tank, well, that's affecting all tanks in general, so no, I don't care about that. The pressure of the column of water external to the tank. I don't see any column of water external to the tank, so I don't know what is this about. So the next one is the pressure of the gas space at the top of the tank. So. We have, do we have that? Yes, we have pressure of the gas space at the top of that tank that is affecting the low pressure side of the detector. So that's why uh, delta is my answer. So now something important here, we need to start going over this, uh, the water tanks, okay? So for the water tanks, I think we really need to kind of like analyze them. So in this one, I think that's gonna be very, very important to be able to analyze the problems with these tanks. So the first uh, example that we have here is P079. I think there was another one, but let's go and take a look at this one. So we're gonna refer to the drawing of two water storage tanks with four differential pressure level detectors. The tanks are then identical and are being maintained at 17 psi gas pressure, so that means that the tank is over pressure because it's higher than the atmospheric pressure. Tanks are located in a building that is currently at atmospheric pressure, yeah. 
atmospheric pressure. All level detectors are producing level indications of 70%. So some of this stuff is just blah, blah, blah. Most of this, you know, it's a given that it's going to be maintained at another pressure and that the building is going to be maintained at atmospheric pressure. So those are like the givens. You already know that, and this can be 17, this can be 20, this can be 30, it can be anything, right? So those are the givens. So now the important thing is understanding what the what it, what is the question asking us. So here we have: if a malfunction in the building ventilation system decreases the pressure surrounding the tanks, right? If this decreases the pressure surrounding the tanks, which level detector will produce the lowest level indication, right? So this is like, like saying, if we have a building ventilation system and we create, it's, it's the same as saying that we create a vacuum in the building. It's the same thing as saying that. But what are we actually affecting here? So the stuff that we are actually affecting here is the atmospheric pressure. That's what we're affecting here, and that's something really important. And the atmosphere is uh, the low side pressure of the detector, right? So now... What we have to do is to evaluate each instrument, right? Remember, we have high pressure here because this reference leg is higher than the tank level. Here, the high pressure is here because we have here the pressure of the water and the gas. This tank, it has the high pressure here because here we have a higher pressure here from the water and the gas. And same here, we have this high pressure here. And we're going to have low pressure side, low pressure side, low pressure side, low pressure side, okay? So now, remember the formula, the general formula, the general formula for differential pressure. Differential pressure is going to be pressure high minus pressure low. And also, we have another formula, differential pressure. It's going to be equal to the level indication. It's going to be proportional. So if differential pressure goes up, the level indication goes up. Okay, so now let's evaluate each one. So now we're going to have differential pressure in one. And remember the formula for that? It's going to be equal to the pressure on the is the pressure on the reference and the pressure of the gas, right? And in the other side, we have the pressure of the water and the pressure of the gas. The gas pressures cancel, so we are only left with the pressure on the reference leg minus the pressure of the water. Now, differential pressure level 2... For differential pressure level 2, we are affecting on the high side the pressure of the water plus the pressure of the gas. And on the low side, we are affecting the atmospheric pressure, right? Now let's evaluate differential pressure detector number 3. For number 3, on the high side, we have the water and the gas. And on the low side, we have the reference and the atmosphere, okay? So on the high side, we're going to have pressure of the gas plus pressure of the water. And on the low side, we're going to have the pressure uh, of the reference leg plus the pressure of the atmosphere. Now let's evaluate detector number four. And in this one, remember that the only thing that's going to be affecting us is the 
hydrostatic uh, head pressure. So that's the only thing affecting. So we can say that the detector pressure number four equals to pressure of the water. Okay, and I think we have all the formulas for each detector now. So now let's evaluate what are we affecting here. So differential pressure one stays the same because we are not affecting pressure atmosphere at all. Pressure atmosphere detector pressure number two is decreasing as well on detector number three is decreasing. Detector number four, we're not affecting pressure of the water at all. So for this example, we have the, the lowest level indications, the lowest level indications, lowest level indications are going to be detector number two and three for the lowest level indication. For the highest level indication, obviously we're gonna have detector one and detector four, right? Because they're not, not changing. The only ones that are changing are uh, atmospheric pressure. And this is how we solve these problems. So now let's take a look at the next one. And maybe we can just kind of like copy this part and let's take a look at this one we're going to use the same approach it's going to be the same approach okay so now we need to understand what we are being asked so Remember that this information is basically given, right? We know that the tank is going to be surrounded by atmospheric pressure. We know that the tank is going to be maintained an overpressure. So those are given things. If we have a tank, that's what, a, that's what being in a tank is. That's what having water in a tank is, right? Temperature around 60, between 60 and 80. That's like a normal thing. The important thing is, to read the question. What is this asking for? Here is telling me if a leak on the top of each tank is going to cause a complete loss of overpressure, which detector is going to produce the lowest level indication? From this question, it doesn't matter if it's asking for lower level or higher level indication. If we have a leak on the top of the tank, we shall be able to determine which ones are the highest and the lowest. Okay. So we have a loss of overpressure. Okay, so we have loss of overpressure. What does that mean with loss of overpressure? That basically means that we're affecting the pressure of the gas, meaning that we're gonna affecting the high pressure side of the detector. In this case. And what is he doing? If we are losing pressure, so pressure is going down, right? So we know this one is going down. This one is going down. So these two are being affected. This is not being affected. This is not being affected, right? So if we have a loss of overpressure, that means that detector number two and three, as we can see here, this differential pressure indication is going down. Therefore, the level indication is going down. So the level indication, the lowest level indication is gonna be two and three because this one's stay the same. One and four, we are not changing anything from those ones. We are not, they're not being affected at all. Okay, what if it's asking that we have a increase in pressure, right? Which one will be the lowest level indication? So if it's the opposite, we are increasing this one. We're increasing this one. 
So that means that we're increasing the differential level, the, the differential pressure and the level indication. And it will give us a lower level indication as which one? Well, one and four, right? It depends on how is the question being asked. That's what we need to understand first. Like, what is this question wanting me to, to answer, right? But since we already know these formulas and we know what we are affecting, we really can, they can ask us anything, basically. And there are going to be questions like that. Like, all the questions are going to be like that. So let's just take a look at another one. What are they asking me? So everything is going to be the same. Everything is the same. It's not changing at all. They may add some information, but it's just basically the same. The important part is here, like in the question part. This one is saying if a ventilation system malfunction causes the containment structure pressure to decrease, which level detector will produce the lowest level indication? But, well, he's asking me, I have a malfunction in the system and the pressure of containment is going to decrease to 13. Usually the pressure what's going to be 14.7 feet in PSIA, right, at atmosphere. But it's decreasing. That means we are decreasing the pressure atmospheric here. And it's asking me what's the lowest level indication. It doesn't matter. You can ask lowest or highest level indication. In this case, if it's asking me the lowest level indication, I know that it's going to be 1 and 4. But it depends, right, if it asks lowest or level. The important thing is knowing how to answer this part of the question. The next one. The next one is the same question, basically. The only thing is asking a little different. It's telling me again that I have a malfunction in the pressure, uh, in the in the pressure of the containment. So that means that I'm affecting the atmosphere here, which is remember the low side of the pressure on the DP formula. And now it's asking me, okay, which one will produce the highest level indication, right? I know high level indication is going to be 23, but, I mean, we know how to get that information with the formula and the way that we're approaching it. This is an important part, understanding the question. Now, I'm going to go over this one first because it's part of the tanks, and then we will all go over the manometer, which we already went over, but we can just... Go over one of them. Okay, this one. This one is also basically the same. The only thing that we need to remember on this one is that this one is, a, is telling you for a ruptured diaphragm, right? So which detector will produce a reduced level indication? Remember what I say about the ruptured diaphragm? For a ruptured diaphragm, or differential pressure basically goes to zero, right? It's like having an empty tank. So, what happens if we have an empty tank? Empty, empty, right? What happened to each level detector? Which one will kind of produce the lowest level indication? So remember, we have pressure high here, pressure high here, pressure high here, and this one is pressure high here. So in this part, pressure high is going to go to zero. So Differential pressure is pressure high minus pressure low. So for detector number one, for detector number one, I'm going to have some high pressure. 
I'm actually gonna keep my high pressure here for index number one. I'm only getting rid of the low side, okay? Detector pressure two, pressure high minus pressure low. For that one, I'm taking this one to zero. So this one goes to zero. So I actually have like a negative number here. So this one goes down. Now for detective pressure number three, pressure high minus pressure low. Pressure high goes to zero. So that means that the differential pressure is going down as well. And differential pressure detector number four, pressure high minus pressure low. For this one, it's gonna be the same, right? It's like taking this one to zero. That means that my level indication is going down. The only one that is not being affected like that is this one, because my high side of the detector is on my reference leg, right? On my wet reference leg. So that's why I keep this high pressure in here, and I'm not going as slow as all of these ones in here. So yeah, the answer for this one is, you know, uh, which one will produce a reduced level indication? Two, three, and four. Yeah, and I think that's uh, for the majority of the questions. So now let's go over to one of the manometers because we already went over. Just want you to get familiar with the question. So for the manometer question T2973, so the manometer is installed across an orifice in a ventilation duct to determine the direction of the airflow. With the manometer conditions as shown, here comes the important part, the pressure at P1 at this point is going to be compared to P2 is going to be uh, less or more. Right, and also it's asking me for the direction of the airflow goes from left to right. So remember that we said that if we have a height, this is gonna be the low pressure side, and that means that the airflow is going from right to left, right? Because we are applying like more pressure here, and that's how we are be able to push the liquid into here because we have, this is the high pressure side of my detector. And airflow goes from high pressure to, flow, to low pressure, okay. Okay, so yeah, the answer is uh, gonna be, detector one is gonna be less than pressure on detector two, and the direction is from right to left. Yeah, and that's, Alpha. So now we're gonna have remember that we talked about the level, uh, the tank level. So we're gonna be giving this type of questions, and this is R for um, level tanks. So we're gonna be giving this information talking about a water storage tank vent into atmosphere, which is the open tank that we saw that I explained, right? The only thing that I need to remember for these questions is this. The other information is just like stating things that tell me that I can use this. So for instance, the tank is located at sea level and contains X amount of water, of gallons of water at this temperature. If the temperature is between 60 and 80 Fahrenheit, that means that I can use this formula. No problem. A pressure gauge at the bottom of the tank reads 5.6 PSIG. And this is the important part. So it's asking me just what's the level in the tank. And it's in feet. I just need to calculate that. So the way that I do it is, since I know this, so I have 5.6 PSIG times 2.3 feet over PSI, that gives me 12.88. So that's alpha, actually. Okay, now they're giving the same information, but with a picture. So 
So the tank contains a uh, 30 feet of water. So now this is giving me this information. This is giving me the information in feet. He's telling me that I contains 30 feet of water. And it's giving me the information the water is at 60. It's an open tank. It's between 60 and 80 Fahrenheit. So what is the pressure sensed by the detector in PSI? The way that I solved this one, very simple as well, because you can remember another formula, but I'll, I'll do only use this one. I only flip this one. So it's only me 30 feet. So I use 2.3 feet over PSI. So I can convert in PSI, so that gives me 12.88 PSI. And that is Bravo. You know, so I can I can use this one to convert from feet or, or to convert uh, to either feet or PSI. And it's gonna be the same. So if you see all the questions they have, the water is at this temperature, is a water storage tank vented to atmosphere, and it's giving you this, so you just have to convert it to feet. We use the same conversion factor. Same for this one. It's a water storage tank vented to atmosphere, it's giving me the temperature between 60 and 80 Fahrenheit. So that means that I can use the 2.3 conversion factor. So, and it's going to be basically the same for those ones. And well, I think that will be it for today on this one. So we don't go longer on these videos. But yeah, I hope this made things easier for you. And next we will go over section 183002, which is going to be, we're going to be talking about, uh, it's, it's going to be like a short section, actually. But it's kind of like an introduction to the to elevation, to entropy. It's just like a, a basic introduction to entropy. Okay, thank you.